Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Praise God. We're awake and he's blessed us with another opportunity to know him, to walk with him, to praise our God and creator. Another day. Thank you, Lord. Tuesday, September 14th. In California, it's a day of voting. They're trying to recall the governor. But that's not my subject this morning. My subject is... Let me get the title of this week's lesson. Our responsibility for God's creation. We are responsible. God has placed us in charge of his creation. And we are to manage it according to his will. Okay, um, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, I come to you this morning with a grateful heart grateful for all that you've done, all that you've created, all the work you've done to maintain your creation, all the love you've poured into your creation, all the energies you've expended protecting us, caring for us, loving us, providing for us not just physically but emotionally and sacrificially you've provided salvation you've provided the love the joy all that we need comes from you and we thank you God, I pray this day that this lesson encourages someone to know you on a deeper level. In Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. Amen. Okay. So our daily devotional today is titled, Provisions for God's People. It's from the book of Levit Leviticus, chapter 25 verses 18 through 24. Leviticus 25, chapter 18. And it reads, Wherefore, ye shall do my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land in safety. And the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill and dwell therein in safety. And if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years, and ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until her fruits come in, ye shall eat of the old store. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me and in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land if thy brother be waxen poor and hath sold away some of his possession and if any of his kin come to redeem it then he shall redeem that which his brother sold I read too far.
So God is um, giving the Levitical law um, of, of sowing and reaping. And so the sixth year, um, God blesses the harvest or the sowing and it reaps a harvest for three years. And so the seventh year, there's no planting. And so in the eighth year, they would plant. And in the ninth year, they would have new fruit again. But until that ninth year, um, they'd be eaten off the fruit of that sixth year. This is one of the old um, Jewish laws of provision. That's how God provided for them. Okay, so let's go to the Bible and see what the lesson today has about um, God's provision. And it's titled, Be Fruitful and Govern. And the uh, references Genesis chapter 1, verses 28 through 30. And it reads, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green, green herb for me, and it was so. And the commentary says, one of the great distinctions in this passage is the difference between man and the animals and other creatures. The Westminster Confession of Fruit of Faith reads, After God had made all of the creatures, he created man, male and female, with reasonable and immortal souls, enduring with knowledge, righteousness, and true holiness after his own image. Made in the image and likeness of God, man bears characteristics that animals do not possess. Also, although God made animals from the ground, only into man's nostrils did he breathe the breath of life. Man is the crowning achievement of all God's creative work. Man is different from the and higher than animals in a variety of ways. He has the ability to reason and to make many things. Above all else, he possesses the capacity to worship God and commune with him. Animals, on the other hand, lack this ability to reason at this same level and they act based on their instincts. Also, man has a conscience that enables him to distinguish between right and wrong. In Foundations of Pentecostal Theology, Guy P. Duffield wrote, In the New Testament, the word conscience occurs 31 times. It is said about the conscious that it can be good, weak, pure, seared, defiled, evil, and purged. It appears that the conscience is a human trait which was given to man in the beginning. For as soon as man sinned, he hid himself. Furthermore, God gave to man the ability to communicate rationally. When God spoke in Genesis 1, 
verses 28 through 30, he spoke to man and not to the animals. The Lord gave man dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God blessed Adam and Eve. He gave them the earth for their possession. Something was crawling on me. Might have been a spider. Um, God blessed Adam and Eve. He gave them the earth for their possession and gave them power to promulgate and multiply their own kind. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. That's from Psalms 127, verse 3. In Eden, Adam and Eve found the food needed to sustain their body. The Bible divides the vegetable kingdom into three categories. Grass, herbs, and trees. The first humans obtained their food from plants and trees. Genesis 1.29 The members of the animal kingdom, including birds and creeping things, were to eat green. All right, we have an insert here titled, Greater Than Creation. And it says, I asked the whole frame of the world about my God, and he answered me, I am not he, but he made me. Confessions from St. Augustine. Okay, there is section 1B, be fruitful and govern. God has commanded us to be fruitful, multiply, to take dominion over the earth, over the fish, over all living things. So, we are to obey God, <clears throat> and he has provided everything that we need. I thank you for your time. I pray that this lesson has encouraged you to study the Bible for yourself and to seek God in prayer, to know him more intimately. Thank you, and have a blessed day.